Hi, I'm Susan Leedy. I'm one of your students in assessment and counseling, and this is my video for my clinical assessment report. The goal of this assignment is to conduct a thorough evaluation of a client and propose treatment recommendations derived from three assessments, the, that being the mental status examination, the Beck Inventory 2 and the General Anxiety Disorder-7 or the GAD-7. I have a client that I've been working with for the last three months. It's a job that I received for actually for practicum and internship for my master's. And I've changed the name and everything to keep her confidential. However, as it appears on the consent and everything, it's actually her real name. And I've had her parents sign or her mom sign the form um, since she is under 18. Uh, this client, I'm gonna refer to her as Brooke, is a 13 year old Caucasian girl from a middle-class socioeconomic family. She has an older sister of 16, and her parents have been divorced since she was three. The reason for the referral is uh, the Division of Housing Services wanted the family to receive more family counseling, as well as give Brooke individual attention. Her behaviors have been basically showing up since she was three years old, but have continually gotten worse as she's aged. And now that she's 13, she's participating in extremely risky behaviors. Namely, uh, recently spent three nights in juvenile detention. She leaves out the house without permission, sometimes being gone for days. She is abusing uh, alcohol and marijuana and vaping to the point where she grows up. Uh, she's failing out of eighth grade. She has no other peers other than one negative one that she does all of this really terrible stuff with. <laughs> and she recently um, has assaulted her mom, has third degree, two or three third degree assault charges, and she stole her mom's car most recently while driving under the influence at the age of 13. So she does need a lot of help. And in the background and history of Brooke, she's been diagnosed with ADHD and oppositional defiant disorder. This habit has been going on since she was three. And it's, you know, the same time her parents were divorced. So uh, my thoughts are that maybe she experienced some trauma with that. And it's kind of set the stage for her being kind of stuck in that three-year-old tantrum, um, fear, flight response. Um, and so she's currently been prescribed Ritalin and Guafacin, but she refuses to take it most often. And most of her teachers at her school do not think she has ADHD. So the evaluation procedures that I've used in this report, number one, we're focusing solely in this report on the MSE, the Beck depression and the GAD. <laughs> However, in addition to that, I've spent a lot of time with the parents in the home, watching their family dynamic. They both have extremely different parenting styles. One's authoritarian, one is almost neglectful and like kind of letting her do whatever she wants to do. So it's very confusing to her. Uh, she has had an overall psychiatric evaluation. However, it was very vague and just said possible ADHD. So, um, she has quite an ecology surrounding her. We live in a small mountain area. And so she's a probation officer, a DHS officer. The school principal reports to me weekly how she's doing. There's law enforcement, local law enforcement that knows her, that protects her, that's involved. She has two other counselors at school. She's on an IEP and she has a special ed teacher. So the community has really wrapped their arms around her. As far as behavioral observations, she stays in bed for long periods of time. Uh, she co puts covers over her head. She is very addicted to social media and her phone. And she goes into uncontrollable rages, destroying property and physically harming items as well as her parents. She shows no respect for authority, including law enforcement, uh, which ended up landing her in juvenile detention. 
She can yell profanity at her school principal. She can leave the classroom. She basically has zero fear with any kind of consequences. Uh, I touched on the uh, substance abuse and her addiction for social media. She doesn't really have any interests in engaging in basketball or any pro socials or positive peers. She's pretty much lost the majority of her friends since she only hangs out with one negative peer. She refuses to engage in any kind of therapy, proceeds to lock herself in the bathroom or refuse to get in the car for these types of things. And she's getting to the age where her parents will no longer, no longer physically force her to do anything. She doesn't seem to care about her future. <clears throat> So the diagnostic inference that was required in this assessment, um, I feel is, again, dating back to that trauma that she experienced at age three, I feel like possibly her foundation of her first layer of food, shelter, and security was removed, and it was inconsistent in each household, which could have you know, really thrown her into a fear response, um, which then could potentially throw her into these tantrums. So I wanted to kind of focus on getting mom and dad on the same page for parenting style, which to give her a more secure environment. She was actually willing to take the tests uh, just out of more curiosity and uh, boredom probably. But the, in the mental status exam, examination, because she's so young, I did have to explain many definitions of moods and behaviors to her. But we came up with the fact that she feels mostly anxious, angry, depressed, and irritable, as well as guarded, easily irritated or agitated, aggressive. Uh, her behaviors are kind of sometimes very bizarre, and she can be extremely withdrawn, sometimes just not going to school or staying in her room for weeks at a time. On the Beck's depression inventory, she scored a very large score. She scored a 47. So uh, you can see I provided this scale here to show you where she is, uh, which is a high concern. I always thought that she was very depressed, but she doesn't really appear that way. If you were to see her, um, she just kind of looks like she has a heavy heart uh, and just the fact that she stays in bed for long periods of time is also concerning. I'm going to move this. So then on the GAD7, she scored a 12 with extreme difficulty getting along with others. There was a little section below the, the quiz that asked how you get along with other people. So I put extremely difficult. And then she scored a 12, which puts her in the moderate anxiety scale. I feel like this might be skewed because uh, I feel like she has severe anxiety. And a lot of those questions were targeted toward relationships with others. Um, I hope to find it. <clears throat> but I didn't feel like she presents herself normally. And so whereas she is experiencing higher anxiety, it may not come off that way in her behavior. So I, I feel like that was an important um, point to mention. So my recommendations for Brooke are many. <laughs> uh, number one, as of recently, um, we've been able to have her respond to some rewards and consequences because they have been issued by a probation officer and the judge, including a ankle monitor. So uh, she's at risk of not passing eighth grade. So those two factors and having them be factors in her probation have really provided some success for her. She's, I uh, incorporated a safety plan, which gives her responsibility to get up on her own with an alarm rather than be woken up by her parents, start giving her age appropriate behaviors for a 13 year old, start being consistent, you know, with uh, actually taking her phone at 9.30 PM, which the parents were not willing to do, but this would be in part of the safety plan because that's when the outbursts and tantrums usually would start 
as well as she would stay on social media all night, which would result in her not going to school, which would result in her staying in bed all day, which would result in further behaviors. So the parents weren't really willing to do that, but since the judge made them, uh, we have been able to successfully have her turn over her phone. She has been going to school more in the last two weeks, and um, we've seen a, actually a shift in her taking responsibility for getting up and getting ready, and you know, which wasn't really happening before. So, in addition, a family contract was really important because both parents and the client are needing to come together on acceptable ways to treat each other, to talk to each other. One parent would uh, give in and give rewards that were exceedingly inappropriate, whereas the other one would be extremely authoritarian. So it was perceived that one house was a consequence and one house was you know, you could, we're free to do whatever you wanted. And so it just was creating a really difficult environment for her to practice consistency or any responsibility. So that's been a big piece of recommendation. Um, also tried to get her involved in pro socials and get her out in the community, but so far she's been unable to do that. She did start taking her medication again, guafacine, not the uh, Ritalin. And I'm not sure yet if it's had an impact. Um, that's supposed to help her basically control her outbursts. It's a time-released medication for kids with ADHD. I'm not sold on the fact that, that she needs it. I think she needs a lot of um, therapy, behavior therapy. Uh, I would think that EMDR would be really successful for her, but she's so unwilling to engage with anyone. Um, that hopefully down the road, she'll mature a little bit and be able to do some of that. I had suggested we have a place in our area called Amazing Brains, which does neurofeedback. And I spoke to them. They were willing to give us a good price on 10 sessions for her symptoms. I mean, it's not recommended for, for people that have potentially bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, but somebody with ADHD, it could be very successful as well as some, uh, PTSD or trauma. And that would provide her the ability to um, balance out some of those gamma, beta, delta uh, waves of her brain, alpha waves, so that she might be able to feel a little more relaxed, focused, uh, reduce her anxiety, and uh, you know just feel more peaceful. So I'm working on that, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get her to do that. Um, and then. A big piece that I think would be important too is coping strategies. I have started the discussions with her recognizing when she feels like she's going to go into a rage, what she can do about that, having a safe room where she can go punch pillows or a punching bag, as well as take a deep breath, walk away, leave the house, encourage both parents to leave the house as long as she's safe. Um, we haven't really had to put away knives or anything like that. She never really has suicidal tendencies or behaviors. So that's been good. Um, she definitely has been working on um, learning how to be aware of when she gets tipped over the edge. So those have been some of the recommendations. And I think that's about it. Um, what else have I put in here? I found this really helpful to look at the level of depression and anxiety. I also am under the assumption that I believe she has reactive attachment disorder. And so I've actually done another assessment around that. And um, it would make sense due to the disruption she has encountered with her parenting styles and when that trauma occurred. So uh, it's a pretty tough situation to solve, but at this point, we are seeing some improvement and uh, just going to keep putting one step in front of the other. So thank you for your time and happy holidays.